Okay, so on this episode of Prep Show, we're going to outline a story. And this is one of my sci-fi short stories that I've already done like a so-so attempt at. But for this episode, I'm bringing in a story guru that I know who's going to help me create like real proper character arcs and real proper motivation and basically help me to get my story to work and help me overcome my worst storytelling habits. This is a fantastic episode full of knowledge bombs that you definitely don't want to miss. So let's do the show. So on the show is Tom Vaughn, writer, director, and teacher. He's written movies like Unstoppable starring Wesley Snipes and Winchester starring Helen Mirren, and has produced or written for every major network and teaches writing workshops in Los Angeles and at the University of Houston. And also on the show is Tristan O'Field, a UK director behind sci-fi shorts like White Lily, who has an excellent sense of story, so I brought him along. Prep Show is brought to you by Hollywood Camera Work. Check out Directing Actors, a huge course that teaches you how to create strong and deep performances. Remember you can stream as a video show or listen as a podcast. And remember to like and subscribe to get notified of new episodes. So, the thing that we have to do here today is that I have a sci-fi short story that... Um, that we have to figure out how to make it better and how to make it work. Um, and this was a story that, uh, Tristan, that I shared with you a while back. And um, I don't know, do you remember reading it a long time ago? I, this is the part where I should lie and say yes. And I don't remember <laughs> reading it a while ago. But <laughs> oh, okay. Well, even better that I can tell you what you thought. But yeah, great. Okay. <laughs> so I'm coming out with fresh eyes, totally. Yeah. Okay. So, so oh, I'm basically, I'm lie and say I've read it before. <laughs> That's good. All right. So, um, well, basically, what you felt with the story was that it was very, you, you know, it. You liked the idea. You thought that there was a moment in there that you thought was dynamite, but it was also not really ready for prime time. There were all kinds of uh, okay. missed opportunities in it, which I agree with. Um, this kind of feels like the sci-fi episode now being told what my opinion was a while ago. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's fine. Right. So, um, so let me, exp let me explain the story for the audience. Um, so basically, this is a story that was based on a dream, um, which should be your red flag right there, because th yeah, when writers have a story, when a writer has a story that's based on a dream, they're going to be super stubborn and there's no narrative in it. So that's, <laughs> that's our problem for, for today. But hear me out, though. So basically, okay. this is the story that, that um, this is the story as I wrote it originally. And by the way, when we work here today, we're just going to pretend the original doesn't exist. We're going to map out some new okay. beats. And if we can save anything from the old one, that's fine. Um, I'm, I'm not attached to it in, in that way. Okay, so right. here's the story. Um, so obviously I said it was based on a dream of mine of being in um, of just being in prison and not knowing why I'm there and not being able to get any information from anybody about what I'm doing there. I'm just there because um, so the so the story as it was, was that you you have a guy who suddenly gets he's sleeping in his bed. Suddenly there's a SWAT team coming in and he gets arrested. He gets dragged through into prison, kind of semi drugged. Um, and then he's in prison and tries to find out why he's there, and um, and nothing makes sense. And there are some characters in the in the story that will turn out to have meaning later. But he there's some spend some time interacting with them. But basically, as he starts probing this, there is a key moment where he steals some information. He steals like the report on himself, and it's just blank. And he has various experiences that lead him to believe that this is actually not real. Um, and then he, so then they start discussing why, uh, why are you here? I mean, why, because normally what you dream is the stuff that, that reflects your like waking reality, but the stuff that you can't confront. And basically if you are in prison, that's because you're like blocked in your outer life. Um, and so then they are supposed to be trying to crack that code and, um, which they hopefully do. And then he's out of, so yeah, and then he's out of the dream, and he gets dragged through a palace um, out to, like, a, a, a crowd of, like, a million people, and his father is a dictator, and he has to take over the family business. 
<laughs> that was the story as it was. Okay. Um, so, so can I just say, well, I mean, actually, no. I mean, let's hear what you think first. Uh, my, I've got a couple questions, obviously. Okay. Uh, my, my first question is how do you as a storyteller feel about that ending? Because right now you're giving it to me purely as like data, as a fact. Mm -hmm. And so I don't quite know like how how you feel about it. Is this a massive tragedy that he's a dictator's son? Is this a well, like, okay. exciting so thing, a the revelation? Thing that I or? So the thing that I forgot to say was that on the inside, he tries to find out who he is. Mm -hmm. um, and he thinks he's got to be some kind of artist or something, some kind of... Uh, some kind of soft thing. And, and so that, so finding out that he's supposed to be taking over the family business like that is the, is the outside that's blocking him from being his true self. So right. it, it wouldn't have so to it's be that. Tra it's, it's tragic that he's this. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing that, that it turns out that he's fighting against. Okay. That's, that's his, that's his, I mean, he finds out the truth about how he really feels about that inside the dream. And so then his next step, which is outside of the story, is obviously he's now going to have to deal with knowing who he is. Okay. Um, okay. I, I can okay. say that I, it doesn't have to be that. This was the part in the original script that actually worked quite well. I remember you, Tristan. I'm now going to beam words into your brain. <laughs> So um, we, this was the part that you said. This was a very shocking turn of events. I mean, that was like uh, high octane at the end there. Um, okay. But, um, I mean, th does any part of it bother you? I, I'm just curious from a story perspective, uh, when you say who he is, I don't know if you're referring to the artist or you're referring to the dictator. The so just, I'm looking for clarity. So okay. he is an he is an artist, and the tragedy is he finds out that he's somewhat of a monster. Well, he's supposed to be a monster. He's supposed to take okay. over and he's, be this person that he doesn't want to be. Great. <clears throat> okay, that makes sense. So if you if you could if you could just succinctly as possible, like what is this story? This is about. A man who who discuss, he doesn't want to be who he's supposed to be. Well, I mean, this is about finding out who you are in your true nature and then having to own up to it. That once you know who you are, you can't keep living your old life. <clears throat> okay. I mean, but that's kind of high, high abstract thinking. I mean, that I don't think it is. Oh, you know? I don't think I mean, it's that. No, I don't think that's I mean, that's it would take some work to turn that into specific things that happen in a story. Yes, but you have to. I mean, mm -hmm. like, yeah. I mean, like, to me, that's the magic why. You know, like, why yeah. are you telling this story? Why does this interest you? What is the story? Uh, because once you figure that out, then everything becomes a, a heck of a lot easier. Okay. Well, I mean, that's the fire that this should be held to then. I mean, I can tell you that all my sci-fi stories come from a curious idea that would turn into a great Twilight Zone episode, which is just like a little dumb idea that we do for 20 minutes. And then hmm, that was interesting. Sure. And, and so, I mean, it doesn't, they don't, those episodes just have like one interesting thought and then don't really achieve much else. And that makes me happy. But it, I just think that, I mean, you know, the Simpsons conclusively proved that you can make entire character arcs in 20 minutes. And, and that's what I thought would be the challenge here is to, is to, you know, make this a whole rounded journey in, in still in a short format. Sure. Uh, and you're looking at 10 to 12 minutes or 20 minutes? 20 ish. Yeah. 20 ish. Okay. That's a good long short. Yeah. Um, I just think that 10 minutes, it starts to, I mean, you have to start cutting out things that make it work. Yeah. Yeah. But that, that is a long short, though, 20 minutes. Oops. <laughs> I hit my, my lever. <laughs> okay. Tristan, how long are your shorts normally? Uh, I normally clock in around 12 minutes. Okay. I think it's a kind of health. Well, they normally they normally write for about twelve minutes and they're normally on for about mm, <laughs> they're normally about nine ten. That's right. Okay.
Okay. Well, I mean, why don't we just say this is shorter? I mean, maybe it's less work to get through the story. If I mean, I mean, basically, the danger would be that we end up in any situation where we feel like we have to come up with more narratives to pad it. I mean, maybe yeah. it's better to just move on. Yeah, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, like, you'll, it doesn't really require that long. And if it does, it does. But mm -hmm. you certainly don't want to get in a position where, where you are padding, particularly when it's a very, you know, simple idea. And I don't mean simple as it is. No, no, pad. but I mean, you know, it's like not, simple it's, is good. it's not offensive. I mean, it's the, it is a simple idea. And I mean, imagine trying to turn this into a feature. That would be agonizing. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> so someone right. will try. Someone will try. Well, good luck to them. <laughs> uh, great. So uh, to me, as soon as you figure out the story, you're halfway done. Um, mm -hmm. And then the next one is the next big question for me is what is the dramatic question? Uh, like what is what is the thing um, that is pushing this story? Um, yeah. So this confronts my worst habit and what I think is everybody's worst habit is that my character is passive so that everything is just happening to him. So, oh, I find myself in prison. Well, let me react to that. Oh, it turns out to be a dream. Let's let me react to that. So basically the character is just being shoved through the story. And right. um, and that's my worst habit. And that so that's on full display right here. So this would be one thing that we could try to answer is, uh, I mean, does he have any drive by himself? Well, let's, I mean, uh, let's, let's pull some stuff out of our butts. Let's try to come up with something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but I, I, I think it's there. I think it's there. I don't think the character, I mean, I don't know. I can't speak for the previous draft, obviously, but I think that drive to figure out who he is, why I'm in prison, is a very clear drive. Like that's a very clear it is, one. but it also feels extremely mechanical. I mean, the moment you have that objective, you can immediately imagine all the steps you would have to go through. You have to ask this person, you have to ask that person, break into an office, and and I mean, this. Well, I should take that back. I watching movies with my ten-year-old daughter makes me really appreciate clear objectives because she yeah. like. I mean, watching Back to the Future. Two, for example, with her, she doesn't understand the time travel. She doesn't understand the relationships. Right. But that sports almanac. That's like she can say, no, 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 no. Yes, yes. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yes. Just because you have like a simple goal and you can measure if you're getting further away or closer. Yeah. And that's just such an such an enlightenment. And I mean, there's nothing wrong with simple. Like, it, like no. I, I know what you're talking about. Is like I don't want to go to the cliches of asking questions, things like that. But there's nothing wrong with simple objectives. If you're afraid of cliches, don't write cliches. You know, write like a man trying to figure out who he is. You can create a thousand ways for him to try to achieve that. That's interesting and new. And to me, the, the one thing that you that you're obligated to do is emotional honesty. You know, that's it. Having somebody in a room trying to ask questions, trying to figure out who they are, doesn't have to be boring. Now, you can do it, obviously, in a very boring way. But if there's emotional honesty and there's stakes there um, and you're coming in from a new angle, that, that's always going to be interesting in my mind. Yeah. I mean, and everybody's super dodgy, so that helps. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and to me, like the, just the three elements of drama, always, 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 somebody wants something, they are having difficulty getting it, and something happens if they fail. You know, just simple objective yeah. obstacles and stakes. Okay, well, I mean, then you actually, now you identify the next problem in this story here is there are really no stakes because, and I asked this even in the email when we were talking about this. Why is this important? I mean, and even and why is this urgent? I mean, couldn't you just wake up and then you well, know? And and what happens if you wake up and you don't find out? So okay, I didn't find out. Hmm. Right. <laughs> I mean, why yeah. is why is this important? Go ahead. Well, I mean, I've got an inherent problem with it being a dream because it it's totally passive. Nothing in the dream is real, with the exception of fear. Fear is the only thing that's ever real inside a dream, um, mm -hmm. and. So my first thought was, well, why don't you try and make it real? 
I mean, if a SWAT team bursts in on him, that, let, change it up a little bit. Why can't he be going out to the marketplace one day and he gets snatched? Or okay. he gets taken. He gets taken by mistake with a group of other people, um, and they won't. They won't believe who he is. He could be telling the whole time, like, if you don't release me, you're going to be in big trouble. Um, and then it becomes more of a quest about him not actively trying to find out who he is, but learning who he is from interacting with the other people in the prison. But then he's definitely not trying to find out who he is anymore. And no, he's kinda, not. But he no, he's not trying he to. No, but he will. The consequences of what happens to him in prison will teach him who he didn't know he was, which to yeah. me I kind of found more interesting. Although these, these feel like two, these feel like they're verging on two different Star Trek episodes. One of them feels, <laughs> well, everything one, is though. <laughs> one of them feels like the Riker episode. Is it splintered? Splintered mind. Where he's he's in well, the that's plane. A, yeah, but that's where he's the whole dream is his response to being tortured, basically. Yeah, right? and then the version that's been popping into my head is a DS Nine episode where Miles O'Brien ends up in prison and ends up with a roommate that he ends up killing. Okay. Um. Anyway, but the point was. So I, think I mean, I, I so here. So I have to say something that's just a little bit stubborn is that. <laughs> <laughs> is I that, knew what I was that, in for when I came well, on the no, show. Well, no, but check this out. I mean, this basically just pulls the rug out from under from the whole thing. This is now so brand new that we got nothing. Do you see what I mean? I mean, <laughs> every, everything that we had before, I feel like, is gone. And that could, I mean, that could turn into a different story. I'm not judging the end product of, of going down that road, but it is an incredibly different road. I mean... I don't think I, so. I think there's beats in there that could remain exactly the same. Do you like it too, Tom? No, I, I agree with you. I think <laughs> it is what it is. You know, it is okay. what it is. This is a story about a man who discovers he's in a dream. And in waking up the dream, he finds out who he is. This is a man confronting his nature within a dream. And I, I tell you, like, I, I, I take Tristan's point as far as, like, once you discover he's in a dream, the stakes so somewhat gone. They just evaporate. Dry. Right. But yeah. two they don't things, have to. I mean, yeah, go ahead. They they don't have to. You're right. I mean, so what you, you have to create new stakes at that point. Mm -hmm. But you can also hold off that it's a dream. And you also have to remember you're dealing with 12 to 14 minutes. Mm -hmm. you know, like that's that's not yeah. that long to sustain tension. That's not that long to sustain the stakes. Um, and you also, once he discovers it's a dream, there's also, is he right? You know, is he even correct yeah. about that? Yeah, I mean, and you then, could have people telling then, him that, that he's insane. I, the, can I ask, or can I just say, there was kind of a, a red herring in there that, I, that was intended, that I didn't explain, was that the, at least the first part is kind of a little bit drugged up. Um, mm -hmm. And I also thought that he should be, I mean... I mean, it's not to step on any stereotypes, but actually be some kind of possible terrorist stereotypes that, so that you could keep it going for a while that this could be like a heart, you know, Department of Homeland Security thing that, um, that that's why he's in prison so that you think he might be guilty of something for a while. I don't know. I mean, that's, that's a kind of a plot line that peters out after a while, but. Sure. Yeah. I, I do have a question of do you need the actual arrest? Yeah, you could just start with them already being interrogated or in prison or, or whatever. Yeah, no, yeah. I don't think so. I mean it it started on a high note. But sure. no, I mean sure. no. I mean the story doesn't really fundamentally change without it. I just thought it was it would yeah, have been I interesting think it, to look at. I I think it creates more mystery if he wakes up in the in the prison and I doesn't agree. know where he is, doesn't know who he is. Um, I agree. And, I, and I, I think it helps a lot with the dream aspect as well. The arrest is um, gone. I, I think I, I agree that, well, I mean, it sustains a better mystery. Yeah. yeah. I mean, because, yeah, why am I here? Uh, and why have they erased his memory? Like what, like what drugs is he on? What, like, mm -hmm. what do they want from him? So it, it isn't just sort of like, why am I in prison? But it's also, what do they want from him? 
Okay. Mm -hmm. Then there was, I mean, I, I, I might have explained this, but just in case I didn't properly, the idea was to try to, I mean, you know, the, to do the dream interpretation from inside the dream, that if with the others that are there that are basically aspects of himself, um, well, now I'm kind of fumbling a little bit, but the other people that are there were supposed to be fragments, really other aspects of himself. Sure. Um, and are they cellmates or are they interrogators? Well, I or? mean, that would be all of it. I mean, if you... I mean, if you are, if you contain all these archetype sub personalities, you would be the, you know, you would be the executioner and the, um, yeah, and the prisoner yeah. and and the and the best buddy and the shrink and, um, yeah. But again, I mean, this is a, this is not twelve minutes. I mean, you almost can't make that come across without exploring a little bit each of these characters. Yeah. I mean, so my point is, is, is what point, what parts of his personality do you want to put on display, and then you can work out the characters. How well, many like, characters you have like from all there. my other characters, they have no personality. <laughs> <So> <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm telling you, it sucks. But um, okay. I, I'm probably a proxy for the vast majority of people when my characters I, have no drive and no personality. <laughs> I, I, I tell you, Pern, this is my my assessment right now. Okay. Okay. is this is not in as bad shape as you think no and i know but i don't I, mind I, I don't mind being pessimist pessimistic and the, then getting yeah. pleasantly surprised but, suddenly. yeah and i and i think a lot of times we get ourselves in trouble when we think thematically first rather than story first um there's if you are if you if you are thinking that these other characters and i don't this isn't required, but if you are thinking these other characters are part of himself, are part of himself, there's no reason why the other characters can't be drilling him of who he is and his inability to say who he is. Of say that say that again, uh, please, because I might have understood something else. Oh, like there's no reason why the other characters can't be interested in who he is as well, which is the um, the interrogator asking him, "Who are you?" And he doesn't know. And when you, so I get that. But when you when you said that, I suddenly heard something else as well, that some of them are insisting who he is, that you're definitely this kind of person. It could be. Yeah. And, and basically I mean, pigeonholing like, him. Yeah. So part of what we do, at least, again, this is we just talking about like us writers, is we we have a habit of thinking intellectually and thinking thematically. And as a result, we're trying to put characters into these themes rather than giving each character their own agency mm -hmm. and having each character like who these other characters are. If you think of those characters purely and there's nothing wrong with doing it partially, but purely as aspects of himself, you kind of get stuck. But if you focus on those characters as what those characters want as aspects of himself, which different versions of himself, what do they want from him? Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden you're giving them wants. And as soon as yeah. you give a character a want, you're giving them agency and you're giving them a direction. And then they're going to start, you know, not writing themselves, but but certainly letting letting them tell you what their actions are going to be. So if this first scene of him opening up or him waking up and not knowing who he is and then being dragged out of there, and then an interrogator asking him, who are you? Who are you? And he can't, and he wants desperately to know who he is, but he can't answer. Mm -hmm. That's going to give you so much more into the next scene because now we know he wants to know who he is. And however okay. he's doing it, if someone recognizes him at, say, at the, the prison cafeteria, someone says hello, there's someone who knows him. And then they're going to say, like, what do you want? Maybe that character knows about, well, we're escaping here. And that character has a whole memory of their relationship that this guy doesn't know. And he wants something from them, whether it's contraband, they're going to escape, they're going to rebel, like what's going okay. on on the other side. And this, this guy has no idea. Can I ask then, that, don't you really feel that the whole idea that this is a dream has to be withhold until basically until it's revealed that... I mean, basically, yes. finding out that this is a dream is only something that happens when we come out of it. Because until then, it's about escaping. 
No, 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 no. I, yeah, I, I, I only mean. Well, to I mean, say but, that but, but, but don't you feel that it, that the moment we know that we're in a dream, it's just like, oh, okay, well, then I guess we'll try to find out why we're in here, and then. I guess we'll try to wake up, but at that point, there's really no pressure to get to that. But until we know it's a dream, we're just in a super weird world where everybody's really dodgy and strange, and we're trying to escape. Uh, well, because, again, because you can try to answer the question about who you are without having to be in a dream and having the amnesia that way. You can also just have amnesia. And behave as a person who doesn't know, and and interrogators are trying to find out who he is, and the whole thing about this being a dream can be something you only understand in retrospect. Yes, I th I I think as soon as you find out, my advice would be when you're thinking about all these characters being aspects of himself, that that should be something we realize in retrospect that it's not as important to realize that as it's happening. And that when he discovers he's isn't in a dream. Isn't that super hard though? I mean, how, yeah. how would, how would we design, <laughs> I mean, how would we design these characters in a way that anybody would even get that hint afterwards? I'm a little, that's, I'm, that's the, that's the, that's the challenge, right? I mean, <laughs> well, like that's, I mean, it's almost like more than a challenge. It's like, I don't even, I can't even, I don't even know how to take the first step. Um, yeah, oh, um, I, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with him realizing as a dream and then looking back. And even if it's the, the old device of a flashback of a single thing of like, I'm trying to escape, I'm going to torture you. You know who you are, be who you are. Like I, I'm totally okay with that. I'm starting to have a really strong opinion about this, that Great. It's, be it's better to not reveal that this is in a dream because the moment we're in a dream, the rest of it is pedestrian. But until then, we're trying to find out who he is. We're trying to escape. Um, you know, there's all, all kinds of collisions up until that. And then, but then we can pop out of the dream and then all the stuff that happened in the dream suddenly makes sense. Yes. Yes. And so that I'm I'm really married now to holding back on this on knowing that this is a dream. Great. No, yeah, I'd second that just cuz yeah, you could come up with new stakes, but again like I said earlier, there's nothing real inside a dream besides fear, and as soon as you're at, as soon as you're aware that you're dreaming, you can control it. So yeah, yeah. well, but even, but even then, the best and worst that can happen is that you wake up, wake with, up, yeah. with a little more knowledge or a little less. And uh, yeah. but I mean, Tristan, this is actually halfway to your idea that this is not a dream, <laughs> <laughs> because now it this is as though it's not. I mean, yeah, yeah, no, I, I mean, it. this yeah, is yeah. not overtly a dream. It's just weird. Mm -hmm. Well, that this is the thing is like you've got to take responsibility as a storyteller and as a filmmaker. When, mm -hmm. when we reveal that it's a dream, that has to be a satisfying answer. And okay. uh, you can't just go, yep, it's all a dream. No, no, I mean, that's, right? that's not the point. The point is that there's going to be knowledge accumulated from, from everything that happens up until that about yeah, who and, he and wants to be, to be. And, and who he doesn't want to be. And now, you get, now he gets plopped into his real world that he doesn't want to be in. And now it suddenly makes sense why he doesn't want that world. Yes. I mean, I'm not, I mean, this, this is, this wouldn't be very cut and dried. I mean, it's, it's going to be, I mean, th this would come down to execution in, in how that, how the, how the inner world is presented so that it looks like dream interpretation afterwards. Well, I mean, you have to hint at it. Like it has to be yeah. a satisfying reveal. Like it has okay. to be like, oh, that makes sense. I mean, oh. so, so I got I got to tell you though that I think that the high point is not so much coming out that it's a dream. That the dream is just a vehicle to finding out who you are, and you could have made an entirely different story up to that that would also result in him knowing who he is. And now yes. he has this, and now he has this reality that doesn't fit with who he is. And now he's got to, I mean, now he's got to sink or swim. And we don't see the resolution of that. We just, we end knowing his real problem. Yeah, but we need to, know, we also need to end knowing, I think, knowing what his decision's going to be before 
I agree. Like not, I agree. Yeah. So, so like you could cut when mm-hmm. he's asked, like, say, are you going to join the family business? Hard cut to the end. But as an audience, you know what answer he's going to pick. OK. Yes. I. So, Tom, do you agree with that? Because I love that. Yeah, I, I, and I, 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 I think you could just as easily just have him react to the crowd and just like look how like broken and disappointed he is that this is yeah his life, and that yeah. would be enough, you know. Just like you just tell by by the look in the man's eyes that this is not what he wants. Okay. I think yeah. You I mean that there. that to me achieves the same end. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah definitely. Um, so, in order to work out who all these other characters are, we need to work out who he is, right? Mm-hmm. Because aren't, I mean, all characters are essentially, them they're in a story to bring out something within the protagonist. So, I mean, mm-hmm. I wouldn't worry too much about creating them as elements of his personality. They're just going to be other people. But so, first of all, you're going to have, we have to work out who he is so we can work out mm-hmm. who everyone else is going to be. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just always blank on that. I mean, this, this is my biggest struggle. Passive, right. passive personality, less characters that all sound the same. Okay, so you. Oh, I mean, you this say is that- this is everybody's problem, but I'm just, I'm, I'm just admitting it. Hang on, let's just run a word here. I'll just write down everything you say. Oh God. Yeah, that's big responsibility. Go ahead. Yeah. Jesus. I mean, so okay. you've already said that he's a creative type at the moment. That's what you've said, that he doesn't fit in with the brutal world that he lives in, right? He's the opposite of that. So he's maybe yeah. creative, compassionate. All right, so what type of creative is he? Is he a musician? Does he want to be an actor? You're like, what kind of what kind of person? What What's his, his creative passion? Is there one you like? <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> No, but I mean, is there one that you, that, I mean, There's is there one to that's more on the tip of your tongue than others? Not at the moment, no, which doesn't help you, but pick one for God's sake, man. <laughs> okay. Uh, I was, then I would say musician. Okay. So let's start. So no, least, we, that's the wrong one. Okay, good. <laughs> well, I mean, good. but we so have to make right a choice one? to find out that it's not the right one. Okay. Tom has an opinion. Go ahead. No, I was just joking. It's I think fun. any artist yeah, is yeah. fine. Oh, come on. Um, and it's got to be, it's, uh, it's got to be something that is, f- I mean, we're never going to find out. Well, I mean, so. It's got to be something his father despises, hasn't it? Um, yeah, what would a dictator despise? I, I don't have a lot of experience with dictators. <laughs> no, neither do I. It's all, all based but on I the mean, devil's it's, double. But I mean, anything, painting, music, I mean, that's his wussy son. Mm, yeah, totally. So, um, I mean, so what is most interesting to do? Because, I mean, in, in prison, I mean, would we have him paint on the wall and just yeah, be amazingly I, or, good at it? Or not necessarily paint, but he could carve, like, on the wall, he could do chalk outlines. No, no, but that's what I mean. Lines. I mean, with whatever crude things you have, he just yeah. puts these amazing things on the wall. Yeah. Okay. I think that's a good one. Painter. <laughs> okay. I mean, there's, I mean... We could only, I mean, he would have to do some of these things or we wouldn't know that personality trait, right? Yeah. And I feel like carving some stuff in prison makes, I mean, it's easy to do visually. Yeah, because, I mean, if it's music, what's he going to do? Just I mean, music, what's he going to do? Well, <laughs> yeah, or just get everybody around in a certain argue, place. I would argue it's just, it's just creativity. Like, it, like, like you, can, you can choose specifics within the prison, of within yeah. the dream, but what he actually does in his own life, you know, like I don't think that's particularly important. And I, okay. I, I think uh, okay. just being an artist is the key thing. And whatever artist is but in I, that But I was prison, just concerned, I mean, because artist doesn't really convert to any action, but painter or musician does. No, no, no. I'm, I'm saying like what we're, I would think what we're choosing here is what's going to be in the prison. Mm-hmm. But whether that's a painter or a musician or whatever in the prison doesn't necessarily need to be what kind of artist or creative person he is in real life. Ah, okay, yeah, thought. I buy that. I, I buy that. that. I mean, yeah. it's the flavor. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And also, I mean, it. So since we don't find out afterwards, it, it it's just whatever, whatever fits basically. Yeah. Yeah. But okay. I love like the painting in the cell. Uh, I think 
uplifting, not even necessarily uplifting, but beautiful music in the prison. All of these things could represent that. Okay. Mm. So we'll just uh, have it be miscellaneous. Okay. <laughs> he's a miscellaneous artist. Okay, so he's going to be, if let's maybe think of opposites of his father then. So he's going to be compassionate, which could be seen yeah. as weak. Okay, Empathy. so that yeah. that's fantastic. So he needs to basically he needs to save the cat. Yeah, oh, <laughs> we're gonna go that far. Yeah. Oh yeah. damn it! I finally found a use for that beat. But I mean, that could be that could be it could be somebody else thrown into the okay. prison who's yeah. so, injured. That you know that can come about. Okay, quite so for example, caring for someone being abused in yeah. prison. So yeah. great. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, and so then that's, also yeah. the opposite of being forced to his police res or his prison responsibilities to somehow damage that person or kill that person or say what? What does that say? Yeah, say again, please. I like that a lot. What is? It? I didn't pick it up. Go ahead. Oh, uh, that uh, we do the opposite where his responsibility within the prison that he has to damage or hurt that person or kill that. person. Okay, so. So do hurtful things against his nature. Yes. Yeah. Perhaps even the okay. artist. He's like he's supposed to kill the artist if you want to really hang a lantern oh, on yeah, it. I like that. That's good. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Okay. So that's cool. So at the moment he's nice. Is that... <clears throat> Is it uh, now that we've we've just made him okay? He's caring and he's nice. Is that have we automatically accidentally made him bland? Bland because probably well just because <laughs> so it, no only in the sense that like uh you know everybody try when they start writing they make a, a nice it's nearly always nice guy and straight away it's like yeah. well you're boring. okay so no. I mean as part of being an artist is that you are supposed to be subversive. That you you have a rebel okay. in you, so you basically okay. you break the rules. Yeah, I like that. That's cool. Yeah, and it's also it's also how you play it. Like, and I and I know you haven't set your mind on this scene, but say you do have the scene where uh, the prison guard or the interrogator wants to know who he is. You can play him your lead where he's very meek and going, I don't know, please help me. Or you can have him very strong going, I'm going to, you know, like, I'm going to kick your ass. I don't know who I am, but I'm going to make sure you hang for this. Like it, it there are different ways to play okay. that character in the yeah. exact same situation. Mm. Yeah. I like that. That's cool. Um, like what would be specific things you, that you might do in a scene like this? I'm just I'm concerned with writing an attitude and not having the steps to do it. <clears throat> well, it's if and just say we he doesn't he doesn't remember who he is, right? Uh huh. Yeah. But that doesn't mean he's lost confidence. That doesn't mean he does he no longer has a sense of power. That doesn't mean he no longer has a sense that he is in charge of his own destiny. Like you could actually see that break. Like when he wakes up, he could be oh, yeah. in the back of his mind. He knows he's powerful. He knows he's not supposed to be there. He doesn't remember who he is, but he knows he's not scared of these guards. And yet that maybe the prison breaks him in some way. Okay, let's play with that a little bit because I always had him cast as like this, uh, you know, this kind of soft person. Um, right. and humble and stuff like that. But if he has grown up as a prince, like yep. from coming to America, there is like this inner confidence that you wouldn't be able to shake. Yep. Um, <clears throat> and perhaps the reality so, of this prison does shake him. So he knows he's important. Yes. Possibly, mm. yeah. I mean, let's write it down and... Yeah. yeah. I mean, nothing happens until we make a decision, and then we can find out if it's the wrong one. <clears throat> yeah, and a lot, it's also just a good lesson of some. sometimes we make basic assumptions early on, and we forget that we can change those basic assumptions any time. We get locked into our own ideas. Yeah, I'm, I think it's, off, it's often easier to just put something out there and see if it floats. Um, and... Um, 
Yeah, I mean, it's, some director said there's nothing happens until somebody makes a decision. So let's just make a decision and then we'll correct it if it's the wrong one. And that, that's just a, such a faster way to work than try to sit and come up with the perfect decision. It's just make the wrong one and then realize it's wrong and then make the right one. So. That might be a paraphrase of Sidney Pollack, who said it's nothing probably happened. Him. Yeah. He said nothing happens until somebody wants something. Oh, well, that's different, but uh, but I agree. Anyway, so I let's, know. okay. So with this in mind, could we just, could we just like put in 10 scenes that could happen with this in mind? Absolutely. Um, okay. So I set up, which is now the old document, but I set it up here in the, in the whiteboard in causality. And so let's forget this lane here. And then we just say, Scenes in prison. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> okay, so I mean, you, you've already, Tommy, you said like um, in the food line, perhaps. Yeah. Somebody recognizing, maybe somebody recognizing in the food line or just him being in that situation. Okay, so somebody recognizes, I'm just going to, I mean, we don't know where any of this goes. I'm yeah, just going to, sure. I'm just going to put it in. So we had uh, carving. Beautiful art in the cell. We have um, pushing back hard against interrogator. Yeah. Meeting a cellmate. Was I know. Well. Uh, let's save that until that has. Uh, I mean, I assume that it will happen, but let's wait until it has more of a reason. Um, oh, sorry. I thought we were just throwing scene scene oh, ideas okay. out. Well, okay. Okay. I'll, I'll just put it in. Meeting his cellmate. But cool. no, so the thing that we had before was that he has to do brutal work that's against his nature. Yeah. We had one more. We had, um, Coffee what the hell was it? I mean, let's just switch back to Word where yeah. I wrote this down. Caring for somebody who's being abused. Yeah. I should learn to type for someone being abused. Okay. Can we come up with like, let's try to come up with like five more things that could happen with this okay. in mind. <laughs> uh, yeah, you could have trying uh, to escape, trying to escape. Duh. Okay. We can't already be stuck. Sorry, Tommy, I cut you off earlier. Were you going to say try to escape? Uh, no, but I can't remember what I was going to say. Ah. Oh, I'm so sorry. sorry. Everybody be quiet while Tom My remembers. Bad. <laughs> while Tom thinks. <laughs> um, uh, I think you should probably, uh, I, probably, you know, who's been there forever? Has anyone been there forever and never left? Oh, that's um, cool. Okay, that's interesting. Let's yeah. let's stop and think about that for a second. Um, so, because, well, at some point, we're somehow going to have to reveal that this is all inside of his mind, but this could be, uh, I mean, so there could be a wise person that's like straight out of hero's journey type stuff, but there could be a wise person who's trying to push him to this realization. Yeah, and have we ever figured out how does he figure out this is a dream? Well, and maybe what, what, maybe and he doesn't. Does he, maybe he doesn't. Maybe he escapes and then he wakes up. That's great. I would think. Well, maybe not. But I was thinking of like that. What do you have to do to conclude it's a dream? And I think escaping is okay. Like, that's a thing of like, that's a sacrifice. That's a thing that has to be achieved. And, and then that's, that's how he finds out it's a dream. Okay. Um, so, though, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm I mean, we're saying, not can I say that for now? So, we're still talking about keeping, uh, keeping the ending here that he wakes up and then there's a reveal at the end. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And okay. so. I, I think for any of these things of, you know, two crucial questions I ask myself is what do they think they want and what do they really want? Okay. And, 
And what they think they want is who they are in the beginning. And the process of, of what is often referred to as a character arc, and I'm not a huge fan of that particular phrase, um, but uh, it is the realization of what they really want. And so if, if him escaping is the thing that wakes him up, is it related enough to it? Or is it just, oh, I escape and therefore, like, what does he sacrifice? What, okay. How, I be, how I does believe he in kill this. off his old self? How does he kill mm -hmm. off his old self mm -hmm. in order to wake up? Like, so, does he, does he so, protect the artist against the mob and, and then gets, you know, so I have a killed. I have a very typical way to do this that there is a character right. trait that's standing in the way of him escaping and that means that he has sure. to give up a character trait in order to escape. So for example, it I mean this is this wouldn't be this story but what if if he was afraid of uh, of snakes and and in order to escape he has to swim through this uh, this sewer full of snakes and I mean it, it's not this story sure. but do you, but do you see what I mean that there's a transformation that's directly tied to the escape he has to give up the old character trait right yes so to me like you're almost you know if you want to hang a lantern on it but don't just make it obvious where he has a chance to rule the prison mm -hmm. or save the artist uh, like and he saves the artist and this is not 12 minutes anymore, by the way. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We're back up on 25, but that's no, interesting. No, no, you're good. You're good. Yeah, I think you're okay. But like, but ultimately it's a choice, you know, like, and that choice, whatever that But this that is interesting because is, if he kills if he off rules, the old version of himself. Well, but if he rules the prison, there is no need to escape, right? Right. Well, he's stuck in the prison, you know, like he's still in the prison forever. But but don't worry about ruling the prison because ruling the prison is is just a, a random thrown out idea. What mm -hmm. you're looking for is what is the choice he is forced to make? And that choice is the thing that kills off his old self and creates the new self. And I feel like we have to answer that. What wakes up. Yes. Let's try to answer that. Okay. <laughs> Dot, dot, dot. Dot. <laughs> because if his life is a prison, and like we're going out of the metaphor of like being a dictator, but he's in charge, there is a sense of, you know, part of what he has to do to be the leader of all the prisoners is to kill off the artist. And he can't do it. So, and, the, so I mean... I, I assume that this is still just like a random thought that that uh, that we pulled out here with ruling the prison. It sounds to me that that's the kind of thing that we need a lot of work to build up to rule the prison. I mean, no. is there? A, well, I mean, can you well, can, can you imagine a fast way to do that? Two, yes, absolutely. Two things. Okay. One, remember, he doesn't know who he is, and okay. if he learns he's the main guy who runs the prison, it's there, right? So Ooh, you don't. So he's, you don't he's, have, a, he's held captive by himself. It could, I guess. Well, when I say rule the prison, I don't mean rule the prison as in the warden. I mean amongst the prisoners. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So like prisons are usually there's like two or three head honchos who run gangs. Uh -huh. um, he could very well find out that he is in part of this <clears throat> process. That he is one of the guys who runs the gang who runs the prison, that he's like the godfather inside the prison. Um, and part of what he has to do is kill that damn artist uh, or the musician or whatever. But the fact that we're not telling a story of an every man who becomes the leader of the prison is key because he has no memory. So okay. he could he could eventually reveal you are the head honcho here and yeah. the choice he has to make is that is he going to embrace that or is he going to worry about the one person that's making this prison bearable which is the musician or the artist or whatever because all these guys these guys are worried about you because you're going crazy and you're losing your mind you've got to show them by killing this guy that you're still the man and yes. then yeah but there I could mean, be a, there could be I other mean, devices. So, I mean, 
Obviously, the stakes are easy to understand in terms of maintaining his status, but are the stakes easy? I mean, is the choice easy to understand? Like, why is it important to choose being the sensitive person, the artist? I mean, so there's, so, I mean, I just, I don't understand. The, the choice doesn't make a, so much sense to me. Um, oh, you mean your dream doesn't make much sense to you, Per? <laughs> well, I mean, we're... We have traveled <laughs> since my dream, and which is a good thing, by the way, because dreams don't have good narratives. Do yeah, you've got good dream logic here. You're fine. Like to no, me, I mean, but the, the, the concern that I had was this thing about oh, I mean, being the guy in prison and having to choose between that and being the sensitive person and the artist. That choice doesn't seem like a strong or urgent choice to me. I okay, you lost me. Say that again. Okay, um, it just, it doesn't feel like a strong, it doesn't feel like a powerful decision to have to make. Am I going to be the, the head honcho or am, gonna, am I going to be, you know, my, am I going to be a painter and musician? I don't think we're talking about that. I think we're talking about do you slice the throat of the painter in order to maintain So, but that means that now quo. he's... So in that model, he is not the so he is not the painter. He's in prison, and there is a sensitive person, a different person, and I, I don't understand. I'm going from the idea that everybody there is he's in a dream. He's in his dream. Everybody in there is an aspect of himself. Okay. Right? In order to okay uh, survive within that prison, and we're just. Again, just throwing this out there as a possibility of the choice. No, but this, that he but has this to is make. interesting. So he is not necessarily himself as a protagonist. He is not necessarily the artist. There is an artist, and there is a head honcho. Or I mean, yes, no. The I mean, artist so he is basic, someone separate. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Separate. So he basically chooses who to slay. Essentially, yeah. Okay. I need to adjust my brain. That's, that's a different concept. But um, but again, Per, we're... No, we're spitballing. Yeah, the, we're spitballing. The specifics <clears throat> aren't important. The goal yeah. here, the goal here is to make him earn his growth. He has to earn it. He mm -hmm. has to make a choice. And that choice has to kill off his old version of himself so he can become this new version of himself. Um, and, you, and you can play it any way you want. Right, like so, you can, but you have so to make I, I think, choices. So there, there's something here that that's a little squeaky for me personally, which is okay. that this idea that the others are aspects of himself. I think obviously that's nice to know; it's easy to write. But that's the thing that I'm most nervous about being clear when we come out on the other side. I mean, we might understand his transformation, but I, I'm not sure we're going to look back and say, "Oh, those other people in prison were aspects of himself." I'm I'm afraid that well, that how, won't be clear. How much how yeah. how important is that for you for the, the not, audience to understand it? That not was gonna very. be my question. It's, it's, okay. It, it, <laughs> I mean it, it doesn't it doesn't tickle me no. It does, I mean it's yeah. I mean this is more the kind of thing that once you know that it's it's easy to produce a lot of situations from it. Sure. Um, mm. but I just I'm afraid of the I'm afraid of the plot hinging on that being understood. Yeah, I don't think it has to be. That's the whole. No. That's the whole point we're trying to avoid. Okay. Is that being because giving those people agency, giving them their own wants, creating conflict through that want is everything, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Like it doesn't. We're not looking for the audience to thematically understand that these are all aspects of himself. That's something for later on. That's something you know that you can talk about at the festival. But, but it's but, but it's still if the if we project these qualities out on the other. So you have somebody else who's an artist, and you have something else who's somebody else. Who I would argue a, they're just starting points. But you yeah. have to give those people their own agency. I would almost rather that those that the choice between these two ways of being are internal to him and not projected out on one of the other characters. I think that's that's what I'm struggling with a little bit. Does okay. that make sense? I mean, is that making sense? It makes sense. sense. That it's, because, it makes sense, but it's if, a weak choice because everything's internal. Well, I mean, no. 
okay, well, I, I mean, I agree with that philosophically, <laughs> but yeah. um, but it's still, I mean, he, I mean, he has to choose between two ways of being. He has both capacities, right? And okay. that means that we would have to see both capacities. But um, but that means that when he chooses one, he owns it. I mean, then that that is his growth. Whereas if he chooses who, which external character to slay, I'm, once we wake up, then we have to realize that all those were part of him, and then he can own that growth. I, f I feel like it. he doesn't own it easily. This is super abstract. Maybe that's a yeah. sign we're off on a tangent. <laughs> yeah, and I, I, I mean, uh, we can always figure out reasons why something is not going to work, right? But at the end of the day, we still have to make choices and put pen to paper. And and, yeah. and, act, Again, in, and that, act. in that case, I, I feel like that the idea that the others are aspects of himself, I feel like that should be part of the sprinkle. I, I'm, I have difficulty with that being fundamental. Okay. I, um, I don't think these threads will come together in the end. I mean, they will come together technically, but I don't think we will understand it as viewers. I I disagree. I think this is something like okay. this is something people are going to be chatting about later on in the bar. Going, you didn't, that, didn't you think that he was part of this? And that I I don't think it needs to be fundamental to the reveal in your story. Yeah, you're still creating drama, per. I mean, like mm -hmm. that's this is the key thing. Is like you still have to create conflict and drama that's interesting to us, right? Like the themes are great and they're helpful later on. Mm -hmm. But we're looking for ways to externalize this, this drama. One of your big notes to me was that the character is passive and we're mm -hmm. you know, shooting, shooting ideas to give him a want, to give him action, to give him something to strive but, for, but to achieve. But let's, try, let's summarize where you are right now because it's possible that I haven't understood it properly. Okay. <clears throat> oh, you want me to summarize it? Hmm? Yeah. Okay. Uh, my summary is we have to give each of these characters wants. You have to give them a clean line of action. Simple is not bad. No, no. Dishonest. But, but, dishonest but let's try to stick bad. on the main character. I mean, what qualities is he bringing now if we're basically, I mean, if we're externalizing all the things that he's choosing between, who, what's left in him? I don't understand. I mean, Question. if... I mean, so if he has two, if he has two sides that he needs to choose between, like the soft side and the hard side, um, and we externalize that into two other characters. That oh, he, yeah, he, yeah. Which way is he going to go? In my in my mind, but then, but then who is he in that world? I mean, isn't he kind of a neutral? He is his, nobody in the he, middle. He is his choices. That's all a character ever is: is his choices. Fuck, that's good. Okay. That's all a character ever is, is their choices. So, uh, we're, so he needs, so we need to see him being pro one character and pro another character. And I mean, he needs yeah, to basically I mean, then struggle with who to. What's who more with. important? What's wor what's of more value? You know, like that's, uh, I mean, in my mind, it's very, what we really get stuck with, a lot of writers really get stuck with like how to define a character. They come up with adjectives, they come up with backstory. The secret is always a character is what they want and what they're willing to do to get it. That's mm. always gonna define a character. What they want and what they're willing to do to get it. Now, if this character early on is trying to figure out who they are. That's their want, to figure out who they are. And then eventually figures out, oh my God, I'm in this asylum, but I'm actually kind of in charge of this asylum, right? So I'm starting to figure this out. This person knows me, this person knows me. Now I've got to, now if I want to maintain this status, I have to do this thing. But during this whole time, you're also establishing that the only decent thing in this prison is the art, whether it's the art in his room, the art uh, of this other character. And now the other prisoners are like, well, we hate art. We have to kill art. You're in charge. You have to go kill this thing. And so now he has to make a choice. Do I go kill it? 
Now, how we do these scenes, we do it through drama and make those interesting. Like that scene of how he goes in there and we can do it any way we want, but just say randomly, he walks into the guy's prison and he's got the knife and the artist knows why he's there. Like, how do we make that scene interesting? But then when he decides not to do it, the other prisoners kill him. And that's what wakes him up from the dream. And we've already, of course, set this whole thing up that it's very dreamlike trying to figure these things out. But, but what I mean, we're constantly doing is giving him wants. And then ultimately who he is is revealed when he wakes up when we go, oh, my God, this guy's a dictator. I, I this feel guy's like, stuck in I mean, this but life. But I feel like I, I can get there in a simpler way. Let's try this. That's great. I, mean, I love that yeah. idea. <laughs> so, I mean, because, I mean, th this is not final or anything. I, I just sure. I just made it up two seconds ago, and it's we're going right. to find the bugs as soon as I say it. Simpler right? is right. always better. But um, because the choice is between two ways of being, right? And mm -hmm. we've now talked about one way he can make that choice. What if he is a super sensitive person who's really not fit for being in prison and basically you know in order to survive in there he has to be a person he doesn't want to be because that's going to confront that choice at every step i want to be sensitive i want to paint but i have to be i have to be a badass to do it in here i have to do some things that i don't want to do and through the time that we spend in here there needs to be some then some kind of climax that decisively says I can't do this. I can't. I, I don't want to be this uh, ruthless person. I mean, that's I, because I mean, because being that person, being the sensitive person and surviving in prison will confront that choice. Almost everything that he does. Mm -hmm. Sure. Sure. And, and the key thing is, is you can't let the want be. I want to be a sensitive person. The, the no, no. I mean, that's, that's, be that's almost based. his that's almost his weakness. Right. Yes, and that's yeah. No, I'm not saying you're doing that. I'm just saying that's the thing you have to be careful of. Is that you still have to give him a very clear want, and the want cannot be I want to be sensitive. So I got to tell you, when I say this, I connect with it. Great. Of, that's of, huge. Of of having, and I feel like it's relatively easy to do, which I also think is good. It doesn't need like flowery plot to work. Is that he just needs situations that force him to be tougher than he wants to be. And he could then even that way earn his way to be the head honcho in the prison and just hating being that person. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, as long as you're making them very <laughs> clear Tristan, wants. Is that, uh, is that too much no, of a reality I, shift? No, it's no, it's not at all. Um, it, I mean, it's basically it's building on what we've already done, isn't it? And making it succinct. Okay. Um, can we do one thing? Let's just collapse this, and then um, I just want to try to come up with some scenes that could be this. So, having to be tough. Right. Um, and so, some scenes where a sensitive person would have to be tough. Kill animals. Well, for food in the prison? Well, or a rat. Yeah. Or yeah. Okay. Um. Well, I mean, I mean, having to kill an animal, like. A... Yeah. Well, I mean, it's prison. You're going to have to defend yourself at some point, aren't you? Yeah. You have to defend yourself. Uh. Hmm. Stealing I, I food from somebody else. Yeah. I mean, we're definitely running into the same issue we had before where now he's like reacting to things rather than actively seeking something. But like if you're so, so hungry and you have to get food from someone else, there's a very clear one. Mm -hmm. I, I agree that it's more reacting, but I mean, the things that the two things that we've put in so far are still kind of, well, I mean, why would he kill an animal, by the way? I mean, let's because he has to eat. That's, I mean, one thing. It's um, he could also be told to. Again, passive. Sorry. Um, okay, having to kill an animal because he has to eat. Yeah. 
Uh, but then we're doing the same thing twice inside a, t- a 12 minute short, aren't we? Yeah. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah. And when, so we get them both down now and choose one, which one we like later. Yeah. 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 Fine. Fine. Okay. Um, but I mean, I feel like we should be able to come up with some more, some more stuff here. Uh, well, I mean, the, the issue, like, the issue is he doesn't want to do any of this stuff, <laughs> you know. Like that's what. So okay. we have to motivate well, him. I mean, to so really that means that we have to, to come it. up with something that he wants that would just that would force him to do this. But force him to do this, yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is hard. Mm. Well, I mean, Perry, you've made it hard. I mean, let's be very clear about this. Was a this was a choice you made that made this hard. It's not which, which, intrinsically which hard. Which choice was that? Which is making him a very soft person who doesn't really want anything and wants to be sensitive. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, actually, okay, I understand, yes. Okay, well, I mean, we'll come up with two more things and then we'll, we'll okay. let it die with dignity. Uh, what about defending his art? Someone's trying to clear it. Someone's mm-hmm, trying to clear it off the wall. Oh, that's interesting. That's nice, yeah. This idea yeah. suddenly got, got new wind. Yeah, he has to steal some paint. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now we're really going for it. <laughs> um, is that what he... Okay, is his want... I want to... Forget the sensitive and stuff like that. I want to make art. Is it that simple? And everything else comes up against challenging that choice. Isn't this stuff- kind of a top of Maslow's pyramid problem when you're trying to survive <laughs> and, and actually, no, I want actualization. Just, no, actually, I want this. Oh, no, no, it's this, it's this. Yeah. yeah. Screw surviving as long as I can make art. It, yeah, you know, that's maybe, the driving maybe principle of my life. Yeah. Huh? He's. It says the driving principle of my life. Screw everything. I just want to make stuff. What if he's making his art in secret? Yeah, maybe okay. he's like a like a, a prison graffiti artist. He sneaks out of his cell and uh, paints on the wall somewhere out in the in the. In the well, so a prison Banksy brick. kind of. <laughs> yeah, he's a yeah. prison Banksy. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I mean, because if he makes the art in secret, there is a whole thing about being find found out. Yeah. Which I yeah. think is very easy to play on. There is also then being found out and having to o- own up to it, and yeah. F yeah, I'm an artist, and I'm not ashamed to say it. I suppose it gives him a build, doesn't it, as well? Okay. A what? No, I mean it's building to who he is in real life as well, isn't it? I mean, it's, it means it force it would force him to keep owning up to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it would because there's. It's about, hang on, hang on, one. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm so confused right now. You can cut that, but um, he's choosing. <laughs> well, I like well, now. My I do have a question, and what is the value at this point of him not knowing who he is at the beginning? Because it seems like we're that, moving. That definitely. has drifted. He definitely yeah. knows who he is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Collapse that. Not necessarily. It just means you have to shift the thinking. If you're if you're no longer married to the idea of him physically not knowing who he is, then you know, let it go. But well, if that's I mean, but if that's the core, if that's I mean, the most that, important that idea, that was the to core. You, then that was the core could, idea. Yeah, it could be. I, and again, just I, I, and I, I'm never a big fan of just you know Scott shotgunning stuff out trying to find a story, but. I mean, it, there is something interesting of if going back to the idea, if he doesn't know who he is, a lot of that's the same. And he wakes up every morning and there's artwork in his in his in his prison cell and he doesn't know who's doing it, but okay. it's beautiful. And then part of the mystery is to find out who's doing the artwork. And of course, that, it's is, him. that is very interesting. I like that. Um. So he's like a, um, what's it called? Like a sleepwalking artist. Yes. So, okay. But I mean, 
I can come up with one event to describe that, and then, <laughs> and then I'm out of ideas. So, um, well, I, I don't think it could be it, it could be the central thing. I think it it has to be a secondary thing. I think the want what's going on out there of like who got into my who got into my cell last night. He still has questions with the other prisoners. The other prisoners still kind of know who he is. It has to be this secondary thing, and then him realizing it's actually the primary thing. Mm -hmm. but it's going to go back to the same thing every single time which is what is the driving force behind what he is trying to get through this whole thing yeah and and i mean i feel that trying to find out who you are is still relatively passive i mean don't don't you agree that it's i mean it's not like wanting the sports almanac. No, no, it isn't. But or I don't wanting think to it, stop robots from the future or stuff like that. I mean, it's yeah. Um, I think you've got you've got to establish that of who am I? He goes out into the prison. Other people know who he is and are telling him who he is. He's also trying to figure out who's getting into his fucking prison at night, trying to stay up for that. Mm. Let's let's put oh schlep walking. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta fix that. My OCD is freaking out. So, I mean, how about what if he lands in the prison relatively neutral and everybody's telling him who he is? And this is the whole discussion about who. I mean, who are you? Who am I? I don't. I don't know who I am. Everybody keeps telling me who I am, and I. I'm. And we basically create situations where he gets to be both things. So he gets to be the tough guy, he gets to be the artist, and then develops a severe distaste for being the tough guy. Okay. Or a severe, right. an, an enormous taste for being the artist. Okay. That yeah, seems I, like, I, like that. I would know how to do that. <laughs> okay. Is that a... Um, what kind of okay is that? <laughs> is that I, I like it? Or okay, uh, interesting. <laughs> well, I mean, I I honestly feel like we 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 could have done four different versions of this without any kind of issue, right? Like yes. we really have. So at some um, point, we're also just gonna. Oops. At some at point, some we're point just we have, have to choose to, an angle. We have to choose what we want. I mean, mm. like I. Even, and I've been doing this a while. I mean, I've been writing professionally for a while. I mean, I, so I, I, I know that I can visualize things to a certain extent and like get a draft and rewrite that and move that. But I've mm -hmm. definitely felt like we've had four different versions of this that probably, maybe not four, maybe three, that we probably could have done functioning good uh, short films out of, right? Mm -hmm. And we always risk this this temptation of like no it's got to be genius it's got to be genius it's got to be amazing yeah, no, it's no. got to be I'm over mind there. I, I want it yeah. I want it to be clear and easy enough that I can see a path through it um, right right uh, I mean for, for I me it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be genius I'm really yeah. okay with it I mean not being telling a, a good story well is really really hard Mm -hmm. You know, and every now and then you stumble into genius, but just telling a good story well is a significant challenge. So for me, it's we just pick a side, you know, pick mm -hmm. an angle. Oh, I like this angle and then pursue that. Um, and, and don't necessarily worry about, uh, you know, do you visualize it immediately? It's just a question of, is there a clear want? Is there a clear story? Is there a clear beginning and an end for that character? And you've got an ending that I think is like, could, could work depending on what you create, <laughs> right? Like you, but you've you got an ending great. there. <laughs> uh, it, it's, it's just making that choice. Okay, I'm going to follow through with this. Like I'm gonna go this, and and I'll and I'll tell you, the reason why and I, the reason why we learn fundamentals of story, 
The reason why we go through this, the reason why like, we understand, we go through structure, we go through these things of, of objective, obstacles, stakes. It's not because we have to do it that way. It's so when things are not working perfectly and things aren't coming to us uh, effortlessly, it's either A, so we can find consistency and so we can figure out what's wrong. That's why we do this mm. stuff. No, I mean, this is this is why we're doing this. And, and, and the writing side of this whole show here is that because I, I end up in the same place every single time is that I end yep. up with passive characters who have no goals. Uh, yep. And no personality, and and yep. basically, there is a shift that I desperately want to do because I can see that the the you know the the engine is just not there without it. <clears throat> right, and that's a great word because that's what we're looking for is what is the engine to this story, and the engine to the story is always the want. And it's funny because in working with actors, I'm keenly aware of this that it's not about really working with the actors. It's about coming up with a situation that's uncomfortable that the whole scene just makes itself. And it's just, it's every time you're struggling with a scene, when you when you figure out the mismatch in their realities, it's just boom, then the scene just starts working. And suddenly you're not telling people, be this way, be that way, try to think mm -hmm. this and stuff like that. I mean, it's not even necessary because it's built in to the structure of what we're doing that this is uncomfortable, there are things to overcome. And it's just incredible to watch. It's just the whole thing makes itself. And this is why I really want to shift my brain on the writing side to, I have obviously a resistance that every time I, my characters get clear goals, I have some kind of resistance almost maybe, and, and I've thought about this, that I think that the story that I imagine in my mind is like super magical and it goes in all kinds of directions at the same time. And once you pick a goal, you're excluding a lot of other things. And that makes me very uncomfortable because I feel like I'm chopping down my story yeah. where in reality, I'm picking the thing that's gonna spearhead it. Yeah. Um, but I, I have enormous difficulty giving, giving characters clear goals and just a, a clear stance. Um, and we're back here. I mean, the moment I think about stripping away all this and having the character be passive and oh. this thing happens to me, there's something in me that says, oh. yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, oh, uh, the, now, now I'm back. Now I'm, the, but the it grin, stinks. It, the, it doesn't work. And I know that it doesn't work. And I want to, oh, please help me. The greatest enemy of a good plan is the dream of a perfect one. Yes, I know. <laughs> well, but it's because you have to make some choices. And and it's funny. I just think it's interesting that I know this so well on the acting side that a character is just as much what they are as what they are not. And if every and if every if if everybody just has every trait, then there are no one in particular. I mean, the only way that somebody becomes somebody specific is that there is a clear goal and clear things that they do and things that they don't do that we're choosing. And, and the um, other worry, because we're constantly yeah. told uh, you have to like the character, they have to like the characters. Like, yeah, it doesn't mean the character has to be nice. They well, have but to I have think we're something over that. about I mean, them that I... makes us want to go on a journey with them. And But I yeah, never want I to write anybody who's an asshole because wh why would I want to spend time with that person? And that, that's <laughs> fundamentally flawed yeah, thinking. Yeah, I know. Actually, I've had the same difficulty because I've been trying to say, okay, now everybody's writing characters that you know, are very flawed and trying to write flawed characters, I think is very difficult because I just, uh, I have just no sympathy for them as I'm trying to write this. And, <laughs> yeah. and it's, I don't know. Anyway, so we need to, we need to come back to this. We need to make uh, some kind of choice. Um, okay. Of, I mean, so I still, I still don't object to him in the beginning coming from a somewhat blank place that I don't know who I am. Um, but that's what I did for the whole thing previously. If it forces him to try to be both kinds of people, then I think that's a little bit interesting. If, but again, I mean, I have no implementation details. It's very abstract. Which ones of the ones we've talked about do you guys like? Uh, what did I enjoy? I mean, I was enjoying where we were with the previous, the uh, the having to be tough. 
I was quite taken with. Okay. In, like in which way? How much do you uh, remember? What, can of Can you can you open it up just so I can see the stuff again? Because I yeah having problems remembering which version's which. Uh, yeah, I mean, so the thing about having to be tough, I mean, this was what Tom said. Well, this is really a guy who doesn't want. It's as much more than it's a guy who wants. Maybe it was the one above it. Let me see the one above it. Well, but I mean, this one does confront the choice all the time. The ultimate choice mm. that he has to make is whether to be a tough guy or to live out his sensitive side. Um, having to be tough does confront this all the time. Um so, in terms of engine, it does work a little bit, I think. You would certainly need an antagonist. Yes. Okay. Yes, you would. We're not even, we haven't even talked about that. Okay, here we go. Somebody recognizing the food line. So, here we had the guy who knew he was important, that he was... Mm. So this was really coming from the opposite side, that this is a strong person kind of being sensitive and secret. I don't think it was that so much, wasn't it? Just the fact that he he had a sense of importance. He knew mm -hmm. that... I don't think it was necessary. It was like, hey, I'm okay, the Okay, so cheese. it's more kind of background radiation. Yeah. It was a, he, at least had a, he at least had a sense of... Hang on, wait a minute. You guys shouldn't be treating me like this. But I don't know why that is. I know that he had a sense of confidence about him. That's all I, I seem to remember from that. Mm -hmm. um, but it's then. again, I mean, this is, I mean, this is actually, we're starting to converge because even in this story, we had doing brutal work that's against his nature. Mm. Um, and I, I like the idea of him being the kind of rebel artist as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because but then that's, at least... It's, He's got but, a but don't, but don't you trait. see that there is a thing here of of having both these choices confronted? Because having to do brutal work that's against his nature and caring for somebody, I mean, that makes it clearer for him who he really wants to be. Mm. Yeah, I'm not disputing that. I can see that. I think it's. I think that's pretty cool. And this is that's your kind of you know getting to try both sides, isn't it? Yeah, I mean. It's obviously that idea is super easy to pump out scenes for. Mm. I I think. I mean, I feel like I I would know how to approach that. Okay. Tommy, well, question for you, I mean, mate. That's huge. Yeah. Um, uh, oh god, my brain's just um, fried. Yeah. I mean, I got to tell you, when we just the last five minutes of conversation here, there's a path that's starting to form in my brain about how to get how a path through the story. I almost feel like what we ought to do right now is that now I have to write it. And then we have to have like a follow up call where I mean, where I have to try to reach these goals now that we talked about. And then, yeah, okay. just to just having the confidence to go, I know how to do this, and the confidence to make strong choices is, like, that's a huge part of the battle. Yeah. I mean, that's still my struggle, and all my work is ahead of me. <laughs> so, um, but because, I mean, when you brainstorm like this, there's a little bit too much construction dust to really be able to make choices. Um, and I feel like there, I have one path through this, and if I start writing that, I will quickly find out if that's the right one. Yeah, and I would really okay, strongly, I would recommend you go back to like the very first question we had, which is what is this story? Okay. Let's do this. Let's just put the questions up. So let's just uh, kill what's there. And then what are the questions that, that we want to ask? What is this story? Who is this person at the beginning and who are they at the end? Okay, then we said that we like that he has to give up his old self in order to become his new self. So, yes. uh, give up old self to become new self. Yeah. Ideally, and that is a choice. Ideally, mm. strongly tied to escape and a strong, yeah, and a strong choice. Meaning that, I mean, this is, this is, <clears throat> this is what it comes down to. Once he's yes. making that choice, that's what it comes down to. Yes. And all and you're doing, oh, 
Go ahead, Tristan. Sorry. No, I was, gonna, I was just going to say. Essentially, there are two choices in this film, aren't there? There's one that we see and one that we don't see, and that's going to be the one that we see. The give up, and therefore we know at the end when we realise it's a dream, and he's confronted whether we see loads of people on the balcony or whatever. We then know what the decision is he's going to make at that point based on what yeah. we've yes. just seen. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's great. I like that. So we didn't talk antagonist at all. Let's just talk antagonist no. for five okay. seconds. Hmm. I mean, well, straight away. But you, I mean, you but can can I can I just say that this question here? I mean, if we have the place, the 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 crux where he has to make this change, then everything derives backwards from that. Yes. Um, and so, and that I'll, means that there are, that there are two tracks that emanate backwards where. There are these two ways of being, and he has to obviously explore both and yes. develop a taste for one over the other and then come up on a hard choice. That's the whole point of the story. The whole yeah. point of the story is to give the hero the tools to answer the dramatic question, to make this choice. And those yeah. tools are either physical, spiritual, or emotional. And this is why, this is why, this is why I asked this question first. Always yeah. first. The whole point of your story is to equip him to make this choice at the end. And in my personal character arc, this is me making the choice into goal-driven characters. So me <laughs> passing through this <laughs> ring of fire of writing this is my transformation. Yes. <laughs> so we didn't talk antagonist. I mean, okay. should I mean, I mean, can so. And so I assume that the antagonist's job is to just keep on provoking this choice. Yeah, and well, yes. I mean, in my, like, I always kind of define the antagonist as uh, the person or thing that must be overcome to answer the dramatic question to the audience's okay. satisfaction. Okay, let's try to make that just a little bit more specific. Like, if it's a person then it's basically, I mean, for example, so he could end up basically having an, a, like a tough guy alliance in prison and he basically has to slay that. Yes, that's um, a possibility, but, yeah. Um, but, that, but then it's not an antagonist if it's an alliance. So let's see. Well, I mean, you've so mentioned it. Go ahead. Sorry, Tommy, John. No, 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 Go please. Tristan. No, I was just going to say, well, you've mentioned an interrogator several times. Is that still something that you want to bring... In or do you want to scrap um, that idea? Again, I'm thinking from the ease of producing words that it's very easy. <laughs> <laughs> it's very easy to churn out scenes. I mean, okay. it's like writing is a bitch. I I I hate writing. It's uh, it's like writing code. It's like programming to get words to work. And and it's just so nice when you know when they're coming from. It's just oh, diddle diddle, it's all great. Um, and so an interrogator, I think, is easy to make and it's easy to confront all these things. Even if it's even if it turns out to be the wrong choice, I think just throw it down on the paper as a possibility. But I mean, should an, should an antagonist be the person who's trying to lure him in the wrong direction? Could that be an antagonist? Uh, usually, that tends to be like much more of a distraction. You know, what is sometimes referred to as a deflector. Um, okay. okay. Like the the. Uh, the antagonist can be the institution. It can be the prison. Mm -hmm. It can be the culture of the prison. Um, it could okay. be. Okay. So now we're back on theme. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like again, it's just the person or the thing, and it's also sometimes antagonist can be somebody's own nature, and uh, those are usually. I mean, I, because it's that internal. much I know that that one is difficult because if you don't yeah. externalize it, then you just have a guy standing around thinking. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, but what does he have to overcome? And uh, okay, yes, I, we actually we haven't answered that. No, I mean we haven't. I mean, there's nothing to overcome right now. There's just two tracks and a choice. Yeah, and you have to find a way to make those tracks. Like the so the choice is, isn't oh hey I'm going to sit back and make a choice. He is, there is something that he wants and it forces him. I can either do this or I can do that. And that could be a number of things. It, it could be, um, 
uh, you know, he's got to kill someone he doesn't want to kill, or um, is there art That's, he has to I mean, destroy? I, I understand is the there... difficulty of the choice, but still, it, I mean, antagonist, as I understand it, is is some is something or somebody who's a little more in your face. No, that's what I'm saying. It doesn't have to be. Yeah. Like, it can be. The reason why you are particularly important of having an external antagonist, uh, by that one storyline we were talking about where he is softer and more sympathetic and more, you know, and uh, he's forced to do things he doesn't want to do, that really requires an antagonist because you have to have an, outs an external force making him do shit he doesn't want to do. So okay. So you, you are much more reliant on, on an antagonist in okay. that so we really, scenario. So we really need somebody pushing him in that direction. So it needs to be a prison guard or another prisoner then, doesn't it? Yes. I think, I ideally. Think, yeah. because, because if it's an interrogator, then that can only take place when they're in a specific setting or in a specific room. If it's a guard or an inmate, they can get to him at any time. Hey, do you think it just frees you up for scenes to have? Yeah. Okay. I don't know what that person does. It looks like you're looking at me for more answers. I haven't got it. Yeah, right. no, please, come on. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, no, but uh, no, actually not. I'm thinking. Um, but you're still going to need, and what we haven't answered here is what does he want? Does he want, yeah. Doesn't he, okay, and it needs to be a bit more than he wants to make art, doesn't it? Because yeah. the yeah. Because the decision he's actually confronting, we don't see. That's it the very end of the film and it's all implied yeah um so is he yeah trying to escape is he trying yeah. to survive in the prison is he trying to um uh well, just mean, find yeah. out who he yeah. is and and i take per like the key thing of this stuff is just to make the decision and go with it like mm. once you make the decision and you go with it, you can later on go, God, I don't like this that yeah. much. We just need in, one thing to choose between. Yes. Yeah, and then we can do but it. you need to make the decision. And I and I think I at think some point it's it's does it turn to like does he choose to like if we're not gonna do the escape thing Mm. Does he simply go? I have to survive here. Yeah. And what I don't does he think have we to should do, do to escape? So in that you, case, the antagonist is the environment. Yeah, because if you do escape, then that's what the film's going to become about, and you're going to lose the options for everything else. Um, so yeah, I think it is. I, the I don't know. I mean, you could go into kind of an escape trajectory at some point that I'm. I have to get the hell out of here. I. I don't know, it just doesn't feel like you'd have enough time to, to set that up with everything else. No, I agree. I mean, especially on 12 Minutes, we can't really afford that many, yeah. That yeah. many, that many through yeah. lines. So, so I, I would say his goal is to survive. And then the question is, is what does he have to do to survive? Like, what goal yeah. is he given that I have to do this if I'm going to survive? Uh, yeah. Am I am I going to kill the guard? Am I going to kill the gang leader? And I keep going back to get killing because it's a prison, but it could be anything. Okay, mm. so that means that the antagonist is the hard culture of the prison. Yeah, and the goal is to. I mean, goal. That sounds so long term, but I mean the 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 drive is to. What? I think it's survived, but we still need a more specific external mm -hmm. um, tactic of yeah. I have to do this in order to survive. But I, I also like the idea of realizing everyone's been there forever. <laughs> you know, just yeah. like if, if I his mean, goal I like, is to I like survive, that too, but if his goal I mean, is to survive, he has to accept that this is forever. <laughs> But the thing is that, I mean, that feels more just part of the color of it, the color and yes. the vibe, than it feels like a central thing. I, I, I would argue, yes, you're right, but you still need it if his goal is going to shift to survive. If his goal is going to shift from who am I to I need to survive, he has to accept that he's going to be there. Yeah, I mean, I mean, this, but, I mean but this is still an, I mean, it's okay 
I mean, we've all we we started with the idea that he is uh, he doesn't know who he is and he's trying to find out. If you strike that goal and he's just there and he tries to survive and while trying to survive, not knowing who he is, obviously, but then he starts to have to be ways he doesn't like. Hmm, I don't like being this way. Hmm, I like being this way much better. And then he discovers who he is. Yes. By having to be being forced to be these different ways. So it's not so much a stated goal that I have to find out who I who I am. I mean, that's like a, just a background goal. The, the, the driving goal is to survive. Yes. How, how do what? you feel about him being the prison tattooist? Uh, I mean, that's completely out of left field. What's that? I'm just thinking in terms of, well, we're talking about a place where art could, a, a way that art could flourish in prisons. And we talked about painting on walls and stuff like that. I was just thinking, like, what if he, what if he was the go-to prison tattooist guy? Um, I don't know I, how I'm, it affects the story I, at the I'm, moment. I'm just not against it, it or at all. Um, but it, again, I mean, it seems like it's it's kind of an ornament more than it's a tree and i think we need I, to find I a tree i don't disagree with you at the moment <laughs> <laughs> no but do you do you see what i mean that uh, that we need something that has enough fuel on it that it can pull pull through the story and it seems like if that that idea is is probably interesting i'm Gonna keep that in the back of my mind and try to work it. That's in. all right. That's the only yeah. place. That's just where yeah. I want to plant it. But I yeah. feel like that should be something that would want to. I mean, that should. Hey, this now I can use this thing finally, and then you can put it in. <clears throat> um, I feel like this is enough therapy for today. <laughs> <laughs> what I was gonna say, so, Elias, um hit. There was this thing where Hitchcock what? always used to, if, if, if they were ever blocked, like, for example, now, or run out of juice, he, <laughs> would, we, start, we he, would, he would start telling a story that had absolutely nothing to do with what was going on, and it would actually right. infuriate the person he was writing with. And his, his theory was that you should never press. You should never have to press too hard to find it. If it's right, then it should flow. And um, I'm just, I, I, just I think ask- in a perfect world, but see, we have some terribly bad habits, or let me speak for myself. I have some awful habits that I need to overcome. And mm. that means that I need to put just a little bit more, you know, hand on the steering wheel here. And then once this becomes natural for me, then I can do it that way. Okay, so that's answered my question for you, because yeah. I was going to say, at what point, like Tommy, for example, when you're working on something, at what point do you feel like, do you know what, I'm... I'm I've, this isn't quite going to work yet. I need to give it a breather. Well, I mean, but I mean that happens all the time because you get stuck and then you procrastinate and before you know it, you're doing something else and <laughs> now, and now you're giving it a breather and it's no problem. No, but I mean, so the thing is that this is this is therapy. I'm trying to get over. I'm trying to get over this hurdle where it doesn't make me uncomfortable that a character has a clear goal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I can tell you, per, just working with you the last 90 minutes, I can tell you right now, you are your own worst enemy. Okay. Yeah. Elaborate. I mean, Elaborate. Yeah. I mean, just the way your your mind works of, okay. of uh, not making the choices and thinking of, like, your first instinct is the, is the 10 different versions of it that don't work. And then I go, ah, that's not going to work. And well, let let me let me point out that there is a different way to think about this, and and it's it's very well studied. So there are two parts to a creative process. There okay. is a di- divergent part where you come up with all these ideas. You come up with like a thousand logos that you all think are stink, and then you start to converge on certain ideas. You will see that there are some ideas that start to speak the same language and they start to blob together. And basically, we've been doing divergent phase. Ultimately, yeah. ultimately, Literally, 90. Yes. Yeah, no, but I mean, that's not wrong, though. It's part of it. But no, this is just. Wrong. But the next step right now is to make some choices. And I feel like I should do that. And, and we should come back later where yes. I will have where I will have made a choice and I will meet these goals. That's the challenge. And um, and then we should be talking about it from there. 
because we can't converge right now. We, there's too many ideas in the air. Yes. And, and that's okay. I mean, it's too short of a time frame to demand this to converge on. Yeah, and it's and it's interesting too because you are so decisive with your camera work. You know, like you like no, you I'm not. You're strong you're decisions. Just, no, 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 no. You're just seeing the end result. Oh, okay, all right, no. fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. no, but I mean, this is part of it. You must admit that too many ideas is part of the process, and then, but if you don't, if you don't, then have the ruthlessness to chop out a lot of them then you're in deep trouble. But I am quite good at cutting things. And especially, Great. so especially making the directing actors course or basically anything that has voiceover, uh, writing script for voiceover is agonizing because no matter how short you make it, it's just way too long. And that yeah. means that, and that means you have to shorten, shorten, shorten until it's so short that it just makes no sense and then just effing out with it and out with that and out with that and then finally it starts to work. But it's, I mean, you really have to fight that battle of the ideas you believe in until you just realize this is the thing that's holding me up. If I kill this, all the rest works. Right. And, and I am actually quite good at being decisive, but later. But later, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I think... And I think that the thing that you have to be decisive on is that story of who he is at the beginning and who he is at the end and what does he want? Because everything, that's the only way to distinguish bad ideas from good ones, right? Mm -hmm. Because it, until you make that decision, every idea is kind of equal. And there's no way to figure it out of like, well, and then you're just going by like, well, that's cool. That isn't cool. That's neat. That isn't neat. But if you figure out what is the very thing you are trying to serve, you then mm -hmm. have a criteria by every idea. Like, does it help me tell that story or does it not help me tell that story? And now you have an ability to make well, a decision. Let, let me inject that the doesn't. original idea on that dimension, the original idea wasn't very good because it was passive. Um, yeah. And so this is part of my therapy of making making the making this character active. Great. So I feel like let's stop right here. And mm -hmm. uh, and then if you guys are up for it, we can come back some other time after. I mean, now I have to make you proud. <laughs> <laughs> And and I have to make this work, and then we ought to take it from there, and then we'll see if I can get over my hurdles. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we can okay make and make specific characters. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I could have written 12 pages in the last hour and 40 minutes. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> well, would it, would they have been good though? That's the thing. <laughs> oh, I mean, that's the thing. I well, let know. me point. I mean, this they is more. Be. This is more of a self criticism. It's because I see these in the very screenwriting forums. Everybody's like, "Oh yeah, I wrote 10 pages a day," and I'm like, oh, so "And all I can think is that well, those 10 pages are definitely not going to be in the final yeah. script because yeah. it's just that ultimately writing is closer to soft." Software than art and you have to make all these things fit together and it's just if you're writing that fast you have one plot point per 10 pages and it's yeah. just agonizing to watch these characters idle and it's just not good enough I agree <laughs> so, so that's that's my position on that I mean but well Stephen King can do it but he's the only one yeah I don't know anyone else yeah okay this has been incredibly entertaining and uh, and educational <laughs> And um, and now all my work is in front of me, but this will be interesting. I really want to make this change personally. Perfect. I'm now looking forward to it. I'm excited yeah. to read the next draft. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I didn't realize I was signing up as your unofficial, unofficial therapist. Wonderful. <laughs> well, next time we'll turn the cameras on you, and then we'll do yeah. the whole same thing right. one more time. But Do you know what? It, seriously, on another note, um, you know, I was crowdfunding for Citrus a while back. Yes, I saw. I, I actually thought about bringing, before you, you changed your mind to work with your own story, I actually seriously thought about bringing that to, to you no, guys. No, please. Because, so well, if, that, that's, the, that's the whole point. We're supposed to be doing this for a, for a long time. I mean, you know, I mean, Tom, I, I, 
I will draw on you as much as you want, but I mean, but basically bring smart people in and try to workshop some of these ideas. Well, I thought the idea being that I've already got the funding for it. It would be really good as an episode, I think, because there are issues with the script to bring it up, fix mm -hmm. it, and then you're going to see it produced straight away after I, that. That's like, what. That's why this show exists. It's to okay, do stuff so like that. Let's discuss that at a later date then. Yeah. All right. Sounds cool. fine. Okay. Okay. So lovely, guys. You're great. And uh, Tom, you're, you're so smart. It's fantastic. <laughs> you're very kind. Okay. All right. Well, in that case, uh, that's the episode. All right. All right. I will see you guys later. So I really hope you thought that was interesting. And my next task is now that I'm going to have to flesh out the story. And even though this was recorded a year ago, I just haven't had the time. Um, but editing this, I feel like I now know how to write the story, and I'm definitely going to have to find some time. So anyway, if you need help outlining or debugging a story, get in touch with us, and maybe we can work with it on the show. And remember to like and subscribe and all that, and I'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>